Red alert, people. Red alert, everyone. Be cool. Be cool. Yeah. <laughs> Joanne has a double mocha. Uh huh. Okay. Yep. Defcon one over here. Real cute. Is everything okay? <sighs> what do we need? Ambulance, police, firefighter. No, no, no. Just, just my, my, my hazelnut and my whip. And... That is not the drink of a mentally healthy person. What's, what's wrong? Weird question. Uh, how would you get even with a with a twelve year old? Should I steal his Game Boy? Game Boy. Is that it? <sighs> That's what I should do. Well, you know, Sun Tzu says, if you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory you gain, you will also suffer defeat. What? Yeah. Steals Game Boy. (laughs) What did the poor kid do to deserve your wrath? (laughs) Poor kid? Poor kid? He comes into the library every day that I'm in there, sneaks around the reference section like I don't see him, but the second I turn my back or answer the phone, he grabs a book, any book, off the cart and just, 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 just beats feet out the front door. Poor kid, he's hooked on phonics. God, you hate to see it. Nothing in my job description says I need to be chasing down tweens through a parking lot. You chased him? Put me on a dodgeball court and I would bean him in the face so hard. This is the masterful adult perspective our listeners really call in for. You know, you're really asking for a wedgie right now. Hey, save it for the lonely hearts. (laughs) (laughs) All right, speaking of, you're on, all right? (sighs) All right, all right, all right. Don't swirly him. (laughs) All right, wet willy. (laughs) Hey. God, I'm glad we have this glass between us. Three, two. Evening, cuties. Welcome to Josie's Lonely Hearts Club. I'm your host, Josie Heller. Let's spend the night together. Let's talk about balance. Most of you know by now I manage without a smartphone. I use the station's landline for most calls, and I've got a flip phone for emergencies. It doesn't mean I'm out of touch, just that I hear about things directly from humans, sometimes around town, often directly from you, right here on the show. Takes a little longer, but it gets downstream to me eventually. Your balance is something that gets thrown around a lot. Work-life balance, balance of power, checks and balances, check your account balance, chemical imbalance, balance, (laughs) doesn't even sound like a word anymore. Now, too often, I hear about people, they talk about achieving balance, like it's a handstand or or an orgasm. Because it isn't an achievement. Balance is a state of being. I mean, just ask a tightrope walker. Every step is an adjustment, aware of where you are, where you're going, what you need. You don't set it like cruise control and coast. Balance is a never-ending negotiation. Not unlike a marriage. And when I think of it that way, I'm not so much enamored of balance as I am of karma. Now that's a force I can get behind. The love you take is equal to the love you make. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. It feels fair. I want to turn it over to you tonight. Let's even the odds. Who's got a great revenge story? Who's serving up a deep dish humble pie of instant karmic comeuppance? And who is finally squinting into the light at the end of the long dark tunnel of love? This seesaw only works if someone sits with me. That number tipping the scales is 505-555-KDNM. Frank, who have we got up first? All right. Uh, starting off our show, we have Marnie calling in from Pecos. Marnie from Pecos. Welcome to the show. Hi, Josie. It's so good to be on here. It's so good to have you. Now, how can I help? Now, my mom turned me on to your show just because I just broke up with my ex. He was a huge piece of... He was a huge cow pie. And I just wanted to ask, is it okay to be happy about them having bad things happen to them? Mm. This is a really interesting question because I think this can be tackled a couple of different ways. When you say that your ex has had some bad things happen, I don't want to, I don't want you to tell me that your ex has just gotten hit by a bus or something and you want to throw a party. It's not that, is it? Well, uh, n- no. I maybe I can give you some backstory here. We'll just call him Brad. We'd been dating for 2 years. I I was ready for him to propose, honestly, and I just thought, anyway, Mm. he's a bartender, and on his off day, 
he asked to borrow my truck, my Ford F-150, and he was going to go fishing with the boys. That night, I get a call to get a ride from Hank's auto body shop Uh because he says the windshield smashed by a tree branch. I go pick him up from Hank's, and I see the tree branch. It's gone straight through the windshield. My brand new truck. It was a magnolia. I saw those pink flowers, and you know what I realized? Mm -hmm. My best friend has one of those in the lawn of her house. No. And it turned out he was cheating on me the whole time with her. (gasps) Can you believe the audacity? Every time you think you've met a real sleazeball, the world comes and throws you somebody lower than that. And I gotta tell you, he's bidden for the bottom slot. Really hate that he's done you dirty like that, my dear. So, it sounds to me like you were a, a model partner two years with this man, lending him your truck. And then you have to do some sleuthing and arboreal forensics to figure out that he's been going off the reservation on you? That is just too much for one woman to bear. I don't think you're out of line, because it sounds like he's made that bed, and now he's going to lie in it. You're absolutely right. And you know what, Josie? What? It's, it's like you were saying with uh, karma. Oh. First of all, their house got broken into, and a bunch of wild animals got in. Re- their mailbox was set on fire. I'm pretty sure that's a federal offense. I think so. Their basement flooded, and then... What? They were both banned from the San Antonio Costco. <gasps> Where are they going to get their toilet paper now? It does sound like these two have gotten exactly what's been coming their way. You know, the best revenge is living well, but trust me, it doesn't hurt to uh, find out that there are consequences for their actions. Oh, thank you, Josie. It gives me real closure to hear you say that. Now, I, if, if, if you've got time, I, it, my question's a bit of a two-parter. All righty, well, hit me with it. Which of these things that happened do you think is the worst? Okay, so we've had the basement flood, the mailbox was set on fire, the house was broken into and their wild animals got in it? Yeah, and they were banned from the San Antonio Costco. (sighs) Well, I think the house getting broken into is, I think that would be the most upsetting for me. The type of wild animal that broke into the house might also factor in here. What kind of scat are we talking about? Oh, I think it was a it was a pack of mutant raccoons or something like that. They mm. mm-hmm. I'm I'm just wondering though, what do you think how do you think these criminals got into their house? Like, mm. what do you think is the best way to get in without you know are, getting I seen? Ha- are you trying to recreate No, 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 no. I, I I've been I've been recruited as a mod to the Reddit Bureau of Investigations and I, I'm just trying to I'm trying to uh, solve this mystery here. Hmm. Well, maybe I'm a little behind in my heist movies, but there's always a guy on the inside, isn't there? <gasps> Do you think maybe these 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 burglars brought some uh, Oscar Mayer ham with them and just left it inside the house? That might be a great way to... Do you think it was ham that they used, or do you think maybe they prefer string cheese? Maybe chicken nuggets? Maybe, maybe you might want to call up somebody in animal control and find out what really drives the little buggers wild. That's a great idea. You could say, uh, I've been seeing a lot of raccoons lately, and I want to make sure that I don't put anything in my garbage that attracts them. What do they love to eat? Animal control. Why didn't I think of that? Well, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang up here, and I'm going to call them right now. You just were the answer to my prayers. I'm going to see if I can rustle up some raccoons, and my best friend and ex are going to have a surprise waiting for them. Oh, well, hold on, hold on. You told me this already happened to your ex. Did I just get bamboozled into helping you plan a revenge? Well, this is an advice line, isn't it? Did, did I thought... Bless you. Josie? Uh... Yeah, Frank. Uh, are you an accomplice to a crime now? I... I hope not. Uh, all right, Moriarty. Uh, coming up next, we have Lucas calling in from Dixon. Lucas from Dixon. Welcome to the show. I'm um, so... I- I'm just... Uh, I'm very excited to be here. Uh-huh. Huge, huge fan, Josie. Huge fan, huge fan. Well, how can I help? Uh, well, um, I have a bit of a... Mm, let's call it a conundrum. Here, Josie. Okay. Uh, sometimes it feels like I can be a little bit unlucky in love, but it often feels like that's when my life is going great. And jobs are, are, are fantastic. Credit scores up. The Dow Jones is doing fantastic. But uh, 
typically I'll, I'll meet a good person, a good woman, and at that point, it feels like everything just goes sideways. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to feel like there might be some sort of supernatural elements here working against me. Oh. I, I remember when I, I was with this woman named Sarah Lee. It was around the time that I got this new job. Kind of boring, but fantastic paying job. Things were, I thought were going great. I get a call from my bank to tell me that my, my identity's been stolen and, you know, the, somebody purchased 30 jet skis. <sighs> but then I met this amazing woman, Josie, this amazing home of a woman. Mm, good. Her name was Dottie. You know, we hit it off immediately. She, you know, she had just, just such light about her. Yeah. But a month into the relationship, the accounting firm I, I was working at closed its doors entirely. Oh. It was uh, the Douglas and Watkins accounting firm. Yeah. Apparently, Watkins murdered Douglas after he caught Douglas embezzling from Watkins. Oh. Of course, because the FBI was uh, was involved in the investigation, all the accounts were frozen, so there was no severance. Yikes. Wow. Yeah. Really really tough luck, Lucas. And what I think you've set up for me is, is there is a bit of a pattern. So bring me up to the present. Something made you call in tonight. How are you and Dottie doing now? Me and Dottie are going strong. Oh. I know it's cliche to say, but she is my rock, you know. Mm. She was very comforting, especially during the, the hardest portions of our, our uh, relationship. Um, what happened? Well, Josie, when you're with somebody you love, Sometimes you forget to watch what's in front of you. Well, I tripped on a rock and fell down a silver mine. Oh, no. Broke my leg in three places. Mm. Physical therapy for about six months. Oh. God, it was there the whole time. Mm. I can't fathom having to go through that. And God bless Dottie for being there by your side. You so. know, it was kind of ironic, actually. Leaving physical therapy, I actually tripped on another patient's crutch. My my broken leg actually broke again in three different places. My God. I, I start to think, maybe there's a pattern here. You know, between losing my job to a series of horrible crimes, to breaking my leg multiple times in multiple ways, sometimes I think, maybe I'm cursed. And oh. do you think I should break things off with Dottie and just try try for a hard reset here? Oh, gosh. Here's the thing. I hear how much you love her. I really do. So, Lucas, I I can't in good conscience tell you to break it off with her. Maybe things will improve. Maybe your leg will heal even stronger than it was before, and you will break land speed records. Maybe you'll get a brand new job. But you won't have Dottie. You ever know that when you're thinking something, but you but then you hear someone else say it, and that, mm -hmm. just, oh. that just validates it for you? Well, I was thinking that same thing. Mm -hmm. You have solidified the way that I feel about this. Curse be damned. Right. I'm going to power through because Dottie is everything to me. Mm. I love to hear that kind of unshakable devotion. That's what puts me on the show every week. Lucas, I hope your luck turns around, but I'm glad you won't be facing it alone. All right, well, I thank you so much, Josie. But if you will excuse me, I just got a text alert on my phone. The credit union I'm with just burned to the ground. So I need to make sure that the safety deposit box containing my birth certificate oh. is still okay. Oh, I am pulling for you. Uh, everyone here at KDNM is sending out a uh, 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 good, good juju for you. Okay, Josie. <laughs> Sit tight, cuties. We'll be right back. Okay. Uh... All right, ads playing round for 30. God, poor guy, you know? Must suck to have to choose. Yeah, my heart goes out to him. Say, do you believe in luck? I believe in hot streaks. Oh, well, that's just inertia then. How about you? I think we get enough luck to get by, but we run out when we need a good smack upside the head. Keeps you humble. I used to carry a rabbit's foot, you know, throw my salt, whole deal. Oh, the good old days. Before I lived in a house with wheels, you mean? Yeah, sure. Real good and old. Well, I mean, never really talk about it. Yeah, luck is a fickle mistress, and if she's got any logic to her at all, it is beyond my comprehension. So instead, I hope for the best, but I, you know, pack clean undies. Well, 
Guess it's uh, time to embrace the chaos, Joe. Ooh, I'm ready to cuddle. Okay. We're back. Three, two, one. And we are back to Josie's Lonely Hearts Club talking about karma, balance, and comeuppance. Coming up next on the lines, who have we got waiting, Frank? We have Hannah calling in from Los Alamos whenever you're ready. Hannah, welcome to the show. Hi, welcome. It's uh, it's actually Hannah Julie now. Um, I have decided to give myself a second first name, but um, that's fine that you, you got it incorrectly. I, I Just moving forward, though, it's very important to me. You bet. Hannah Julie. I did have um, a quick... I don't really know if I would call it advice, but I did just want to run something by you. I love it. Let me be your rubber duck. So I have had a bit of a bad luck streak lately. You know, I'm the girl that had macaroni and cheese chucked at my face during work. That Where do you work that that's acceptable? Staples? Mm-hmm. I suppose anything goes in the Staples break room. Well, there's just bullies there, but that's besides the point. So I started seeing a relationship guru, Ted, Mm -hmm. and she has really been working with me about coming into my own. Okay. I've been working on myself. I've been doing archery on Mondays, and on Tuesdays, I've been learning astrology charts, and on Wednesdays, I read The Power of Now. On Thursdays, I take baths. Okay. This is all part of me coming into my own. Here's the problem. What's the point of dating anymore now that Ted has taught me that I am a 10? Great. And most men I look at are Mm. nowhere near where I am standing. If I am and they are, what will we be? Ooh. Ted says this thing that I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but I will and hopefully be forgiven. All right. You are who you are unless you are who you're not. Hmm. All right. Hannah Julie, even though I'm here every week talking about people's romantic problems, I'll tell you that romance is not the solve for every problem. And if... Like you said, you're working on yourself and you've got archery and baths and you are on a mission. And maybe, maybe that lane is too slim for another person. And maybe that is a path that you have to walk alone for a while. And I know that a seed grows into a plant. You know it. You learn it in first grade. You know, a seed grows into a plant. And this might help you because it helped me. Is I think of myself like a plant that I need water and sunlight and fresh air and time. And it feels like you're a bit of a sapling right now, Hannah Julie. So Ted seems to really have a have made a strong impression on you. Don't invite somebody into that light before you're confident that you know how to wield it yet, you know? They might Take a little bit of your sparkle and rub something off in its place. Does does that help? It really does. And I've been, I've been waiting for someone to see that in myself. Oh. Honestly, Ted, I write a check for $100 every week. And, and the fact that you've told me this right now for free, I don't know if I can make it out there on my own without you. Oh, hon. I think you already can. You're doing fine. You've got you've got a weekly schedule. No, I don't have anything on Sundays. Oh, well. I lied, okay? Okay. Sunday, I don't have anything and I don't work. And it's because I got kicked out of that shift. Because after they threw that <laughs> damn macaroni at my face, I freaked out. I would too. Maybe on Sunday, you find a better job. With people who won't fling macaroni at you. What day is your birthday? Because I would love to mail you an astrology chart. For personal identifying information. We 100% will will make this happen. Okay. Frank, don't, don't you worry. Uh, thank you for... Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're so funny. Stop. Hannah, Julie, I do 
want you're so beautiful you, that's in that's so sweet uh and you, you have are, such a nice voice oh <laughs> oh gosh you're too nice and and i i'd be careful with this ted fella anybody who wants to charge for advice <sighs> just make sure that that ted makes you feel good okay that you're you're paying for something that feels like a help and and not someone who's who's cutting you down okay okay i mean i could i could stop reaching out to him and just i don't know if you have plans on sunday i could buy you coffee and maybe we of could of course hannah julie excellent double name i love it excellent guest and you have a fantastic night thanks for coming on the show all right uh while hannah julie and i chart the stars uh we have another caller ready to go well fabulous was sending my way all right uh this is nick calling in from santa fe nick from santa fe welcome to the show uh hi there josie uh long time listener first time caller so excited to be here with you oh wonderful so glad to have you so how can i help I've been through um, a string of heartbreaks and uh, just relationships that haven't worked out lately. My past is a little <laughs> checkered. I just don't know what to do anymore. I feel like I, I don't deserve love in my life anymore. You got to unpack that. Now you mentioned it, it's got to do with your with your past, maybe? Well, I think that's where it all starts. Mm-hmm. You know, I, when I was in high school, I got into some trouble with just the wrong group of guys. Uh, got pulled into this um, crime ring oh, with oh. one of my high school teachers. Um, oh. You know, I was a minor at the time. I didn't get prosecuted or anything. So I, I actually had a chance to rehabilitate my life. And my big passion was always um, roller coasters. Oh, really? I had met the love of my life, Imogen. Okay. And I thought that I was perfect for her. I thought that she was perfect for me. We were in love, but gosh darn it if I didn't mess it all up, Josie. Oh, Nick, it can't have been just you. What what, what could have gone so wrong that it was your fault, you and Imogen? Well, I mentioned that I'm very passionate about my work. I'm a workaholic. I don't work for big roller coaster. I have to foot the bill myself. Mm. Gosh darn it if I didn't run out of money and started dipping into Imogen's. <sighs> Yikes. I tried to recuperate the losses, but... It takes a big man to admit that. And uh, that's tough. It's really hard coming back from that. And uh, now you said there had been a string of heartbreaks. Was Imogen the first or the last? Oh, no, no, no. Imogen was the one, but, you know, since then I've tried everything. I've gone to the Magic Kingdom. I've gone to at least ten different Six Flags. Uh, I rode the Beast in Ohio, and every time I meet someone at one of these roller coasters, it seems like it never ends up working out. I think you are tremendously brave. you got a lot of qualities. I talk to a fair share of folks on the program, and you got a lot of qualities that women call in that they'd like. Nobody's perfect, and everyone's got a, a skeleton or a, you know, an ex who would give a, a not so not so sunny report. So, what would that dream woman look like? Would she travel with you? Oh, that would be that would be amazing. Somebody who's a thrill seeker, someone who mm-hmm. likes to drink uh, box wine on the porch. Uh, yeah. Somebody who's into game show trivia. I don't think that's necessarily an impossibility to ask, Nick. Neither do I, but, you know, it's so hard to find. And Nick, I think you started this conversation telling me that you don't think that you deserve love, and I would be remiss and I would be failing down on the job to try and tell you that that was right. Who doesn't deserve a second chance? Hot dang, Josie, what are you saying? What are you getting at? You're saying you're going to help me out? I'm saying if I can, I will. For a local boy, you're 14 miles up the road, you know? I'd... All right. You know what I think? I think... That I have been a lot of things on this show, and I have talked a lot about love. And I have talked a lot about finding what that love is. And I think we should put this theory to the test. And I think tomorrow, since we're hitting the end of the hour, how about you call in next week? And how about we find you that special somebody? Wow. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that, that'd be amazing. <laughs> that'd be amazing. Well, it, it's uh, I I will be there. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I can't even wow. I can't believe this is happening to me. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> so, uh, look, we'll be in we'll be in touch. Okay. Oh, it's a dream come true. Thank you, Josie. Alrighty, Frank. 
Uh, anybody else? Uh, no. All righty, cuties. It has been one heck of a night here at KDNN on Josie's Lonely Hearts Club. We have been dealing with old patterns and old thought processes that I don't think help anymore. And so in the spirit of balance and the spirit of karma, we have been putting out all this good energy trying to get just a little bit back. I think, cuties, we deserve it. Now, I might be leaving, but keep your hot little hands off that dial because we've got a show coming right up. We've got a... Frank, what's uh, what, what what's up next? Uh, yeah, uh, coming up next is Boris and the Moondogs. Oh, Boris and the Moondogs. Right, so Madrid occasionally hosts some live music down at the Mineshaft, and we have actually been lucky enough to book Boris and the Moondogs, which are a klezmer outfit outside of Albuquerque. You gotta come on in. They're gonna be doing an acoustic set right here, and that is klezmer death metal unplugged. You gotta stick around to hear it once in a lifetime show. That's right, Boris and the Moondogs on KDNN. Sleep tight, cuties. And clear. All right, oh. Joanne. Look at that. You're out yeah. there making your own luck. Mm. Yeah, something, something, something. Fortune favors the bold, I guess. Inspired. <laughs> now all you got to do is <laughs> shove a kid in his locker and you'll have the perfect end to a perfect week. Yeah, I'm not going to start ignoring that book thief just because you guilt me into it. Okay, but hear me out. Maybe you tell his parents... You know, like like a responsible adult would? Nobody likes a tattletale. I don't care how old you are. Yeah, okay. Yeah, No, you're right. You should hit this kid with a dodgeball. Don't think I won't. Did you save our luckless singles info? I need to hang on to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Got it right here. Great. Our very first lonely heart is up for grabs. I'm like, oh, this feels big. Is it big? Because it feels big. It feels inevitable, Joanne. I mean, this this <laughs> feels like a trial run. Oh, for for, for national syndication? Even better, for your own triumphant return to the dating world. (sighs) That tune is getting pretty old. Oh, come on. You want the Southwest's love guru to stay a spinster? Spinster, how dare you? (laughs) I am the compassionate uh, uh, nexus uh, of a universe full of other folks trying to find love. And, And you see, my solidarity in that search is the wellspring of my empathy for them. Oh, my God. What... A wise and enlightened chicken you are. Bwah, 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 says the chicken guru. Bwah, 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 I'm so enlightened. Bwah, bwah, you are so great. You are cruising. Oh, bwah, my bwah. God. I'll see you next <laughs> week, Joanne. Bwah, bwah, bwah. <laughs> you are cruising for a bruising, oh, Frank. You're going to have to catch me. Bwah, bwah, bwah. <laughs> Don't hit that kid. Bwah. Okay, get on out of here. All right, all right, all right. Josie's Lonely Hearts Club was created by Maximilian Clark and Rachel Music. Our callers this week included the talents of Caitlin Carlton, Ross Child, Alex Stein, and Rachel Wong. This episode was edited by Eliza Brucker. Josie's Lonely Hearts Club is brought to you by the Good Story Guild. Keep track of us on Instagram at Good Story Guild, and you could join our Discord, uh, which is linked in the show notes. If you enjoyed the show, consider leaving us a review, tell folks about it, send up a smoke signal. Every little bit counts. We're so appreciative. 99 cuties. <laughs>